to um, read that for you and you follow along in your Bible or on the screen. Is that all right? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. If I mispronounce some, y'all charge it to my head, not to my heart. All Amen. right? Amen. Amen. Joshua chapter 10. Amen. We're going to wait until everybody gets there. And if you're not there yet, you can look on the screen and it's there on the screen. Amen. Here's what I'd like for you to do. Put your finger on verse 13. I'm going to ask you to read verse 13 together with me if you don't mind. All right. I'm going to start at verse 1. The word of the Lord says, Now it came to pass when Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, had heard of how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it, and he had done in Jericho, as he had done in Jericho, excuse me, and her king. So he had done to Ai and her king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, that they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city as one of the royal cities and because it was greater than Ai and all the men thereof were mighty. Wherefore Adonai Zedek king of Jerusalem sent unto Hoham king of Hebron and unto Piram long king of Jermuth, Jarmuth excuse me and unto Japiah king of Lashish and unto Debir king of Eglon saying Lord have mercy. Come up unto me and help me that we may smite Gibeon for it has for it hath made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jeremuth, the king of Lashish, and the king of Eglon gathered themselves together and went up they and all their host, and encamped before Gibeon, and made war against it. Amen. And verse 13, if you're ready, on three, one, two, three. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed still, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasper? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about the whole day. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning. I'm just going to teach a little bit this morning from the thought turn back the hands of time. Turn back the hands of time. Amen. Amen. Well, the, the, the cat is already out of the bag. Uh, everybody already knows that the subject today was the title of a very popular folk song that apparently many of us know very well. Amen. I, I will say, Sister Kitty, that uh, I was a little nervous uh, and had some uh, hesitancy about naming this, uh, this sermon, Turn Back the Hands of Time, because I didn't want anyone to uh, start to think that I was trying to go back to where I came from. Amen. Amen. Because th that... Uh, song, uh, we didn't hear that at the church house. Amen. That was a song that we heard in the streets. Uh, but uh, the message that it conveys is one that we can uh, gain some spiritual strength from on today. If I could just turn back the hands of time. Because Right in, uh, we're in the midst of the season of the year where we do just that. We turn back the hands of time. 
We have something in our nation called daylight savings time. Yes. Yes. And, and, and essentially what we do is we, we uh, set our clocks back one hour. Yes. In order for, y'all going to help me this morning, in order for us to be able to save some daylight uh, because uh, why do we do that, uh, preacher? I'm glad y'all asked the question because uh, some of uh, the young people here might not know why we have daylight savings time. All right. But I, I want you to know that when God created the heavens and the earth, uh, he created uh, the sun and he said, let there be light and light broke and light came running at 186,000 miles per second and God took that light and he rolled it up into a ball and he flung it out into space and he called it the sun. Amen. And, and, and that sun sat there until God decided that he was going to form the earth. And so he formed the earth out of his own hands, with his own hands, and he set it on its axis and made sure that the earth would revolve around the sun. Amen. Now this earth that he made, uh, uh, my brothers and sisters, has uh, the center of it which is called the equator. And when the sun shines on the earth, because the equator is the largest part of this sphere, spherical ball, the sun shines on the equator longer than on the other parts of the All earth. Right. Are y'all following me in my yeah. little science yeah. lesson yeah. this morning? Yeah. Uh, so uh, the folk that are closer to the equator get more sunlight right. than the other people. Right. Right. So what they decided was that what we'll do is we will turn back the clock one hour during the, the months of the year where the days get shorter. Right. Y'all got a glazed look on y'all eyes and like y'all don't know uh, what I'm talking about. That soon as uh, uh, the east, uh, the, the weather has changed and uh, we start getting some cold weather, that the days start getting short. Right. That uh, uh, you, you wake up uh, in the morning and uh, later on over in the evening, before you know it, it's getting dark on us. Uh, so what somebody decided was, well, what we'll do is we will just set our clock back one hour yeah. and that way we'll wake up earlier and we will save some daylight yeah, that's and that's why they call it daylight savings time right, right. but uh, if, uh, if, I, if I could turn back the hands of time is what we're talking about on this morning yeah. uh, because uh, there are a lot of you here today would say if I could turn back the hands of time yeah. there are some things I do different I, I'm going to preach a little while right here because all of us know if we could turn back the hands of time, yes. uh, we wouldn't do some of the things that we did. Amen. Uh, they ain't helping me, Lord. Some of the folk that, 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 that uh, uh, went through the uh, years where they had the Jerry curl, if they could turn back the hands of time. They wouldn't get the Jerry. I wish y'all could uh, go, come on and help me. They wouldn't get the Jerry curl because they know now they ain't got nothing to curl. Amen? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, if they could turn back the hands of time, here's the expression that we use. Uh, we, we say, if I knew uh, now, if I knew then, <laughs> y'all helping me, baby. Well, if I knew then, what I know now, I'd do some things different. Uh, and, and, and all of us know uh, that uh, if we could turn back the hands of time, and if we knew uh, then yeah. what we know now, oh, yeah. we could do a lot better. Yeah, uh, what are you talking about, preacher? Well, uh, if I could turn back the hands of time, I would uh, understand that I need to watch my attitude. Amen. That's the first thing, you got to watch your attitude. Because we know, uh, young men, that your attitude determines your attitude. Oh, they didn't get it, Lord, because then neither one of them said, your attitude determines your attitude. I still ain't got enough folks saying it so that they can get it. Your attitude determines your attitude. Your attitude determines your altitude. If you want to go up in life, you got to have a good attitude. Amen. Oh, I, 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 I know that uh, you think that uh, maybe uh, there are some folk out there with a bad attitude and they're going to get somewhere in life, but no, no, uh, you got to have a good attitude Amen. if you're going to go somewhere in life because your attitude determines your altitude. 
Well, Lord, they don't want to help me this morning, so I guess I'm going to have to meddle a little while. I, if I knew then uh, what I know now, I would not only watch my attitude, I'd also watch my appetite. Amen. Because, see, an appetite is something that is easy to get, but it's hard to turn loose. Amen. Uh, I heard somebody say everything that's good to you. Y'all helping me preach this morning. And that's an appetite, and we get some appetites in our life. What kind of appetites are you talking about, preacher? Uh, well, we get some, some of us get an appetite for sadness. Oh, my goodness. Because sometimes uh, we start to recognize that if I get to put a sad look on my face, uh, that folk will ask me, no, oh, y'all helping me this morning. They'll ask you, what's wrong? And then you get an opportunity to tell them, oh, nothing. oh child, I wish you, oh, Pastor Don Jose, if you only knew how bad things are going with me, uh, how my cat got ran over and my dog ran away, and everything is just going, falling apart in my life. People get an attitude, get, they get an appetite for sadness. Yeah. All right, well, they didn't help me very much on that one, Lord. Maybe they'll help me on this. But some folks get an appetite for sourness. Amen. Right 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 see, see, uh, it's one, it, it's two uh, things you can be. Either you can be sweet or you can be sour. Be sour. Now, uh, the old folk told me that you catch more flies with than you do with vinegar. So it sounds like that it's better to be sweet than it is to be sour. Amen. But uh, it, I, I wonder if the uh, if the, uh, the sinners and the unsaved folk uh, walk in church on some Sunday morning, I wonder if they would catch us in our sweet mode or our sour mode. I wonder if they walk through the door, would they say that everybody in there is in a good mood and happy about being there? I wonder would they look in our church house and say, I'm coming back next Sunday because them folk had a good time over there. Uh, you ought to want to be sweet, child, because there is one uh, who's sweeter every day with him and sweeter than the day before. What's his name? His name is Jesus. And if you've been in this Christian race long enough, you know that it just gets sweeter and sweeter and sweeter because Jesus is our Savior. Yeah, but so I, I wanted to talk to you this morning about these things. I told you I'm going to just do a little bit of teaching because uh, we are celebrating our veterans. Yes. And whenever you talk about uh, war and veterans in the Bible, you got to talk about Joshua. Yeah. Uh huh. Because you know that Joshua fit, fought, fought the. You help me hold the ghost. Y'all, Joshua, y'all help me preach. Joshua fought the battle of love. Yeah, yeah. And you know what happened? The walls came. They came tumbling down because Joshua had a good army. You see, Joshua had the right kind of soldier. Right. And 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 whenever you got an army, my brothers and sisters, you need some good soldiers. Uh, you need some soldiers that's number one are going to do what soldiers are supposed to do. Amen. And I've told you this before. Uh, the first thing that they taught me or when I, I ended up uh, in, in basic training, they taught me how to march. Yes. Oh, glory to his name. Now, uh, you, you th might not think that is very important, but all of us, uh, we remember when we learn how to walk. Amen. Amen. But when you're a soldier, you remember when you learn how to march. Amen. Uh -huh. Because, see, walking and marching is two different things. Uh, the Bible said that we walk by faith and not by sight. And if you're going to be in God's army, you're going to have to learn how to march, child of God. You're going to have to learn how to march in step with God's Holy Spirit. You're going to have to learn how to march in steps with the, the, with the leading of his spirit. You're going to have to learn how to march in step when he said, uh, I want you to stay on track and I don't want you to get distracted. Stay on track and 
And I don't want folk to get in your business. Stay on track. I want you to keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Because the Bible said that he will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on Jesus. So uh, um, Joshua taught his soldiers how to march. How did he teach them how to march? Well, he taught them that you're going to have to do more with your feet than you do with your mouth. Help me, somebody. Y'all going to get that on the way home. Because, see, uh, you can do more with your feet than you can with your mouth. Uh huh. Because why? Because uh, uh, if you show up somewhere, uh, you are being a sermon, and folk would rather see a sermon than hear a sermon every day. And, and you ought to want to be a sermon instead of just preach a sermon, because your life is the sermon that somebody will read, but they won't come to church. If you are good to those who despitefully use you, your life is a sermon. If you miss, if you treat people who treat you bad good, your life is a sermon. So you've got to learn how to be a good soldier. Somebody say good soldier. Good soldier. In the army of the Lord. Yeah. Well, uh, Joshua and, and his soldiers had uh, a responsibility, and you heard the story. Uh, they needed to uh, attack the city of Jericho. And they went in there, and they went, walked around the walls, and they didn't say a word. And then when they shouted, the walls came coming down. Yeah. We all love that story, but the truth, I want to tell you how this thing worked out. Because after they left Jericho, yes. uh -huh, after they had had the victory at Jericho, after they had uh, got on one accord and done what God had told them to do, Amen. they went to a little city called Ai, Amen. and they got the big head. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Because uh, they wasn't, uh, they thought because we beat uh, the, the 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 great walls of Jericho, yeah. uh, because we were able to overcome Jericho, we don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, uh, sometimes we get a little puffed up. And we think if because we won the battle one time, yeah. that it's going to be like that all the time. But Joshua and his men got defeated at Ai. Yeah. Uh, they got defeated at Ai, and now in this text, uh, they're at another city, and there are five kings that are coming against them. Yeah. These, these, these kings have come against Joshua to defeat them, and here's what happens in this text. The Bible says, you read it in your, in your Bible, the Bible says that the sun stood still. Yeah. 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 Sun stood still. Yeah. Now we know that the sun always stands still. And the earth rolls around the sun. But the Bible says that the sun stood still. Which means that the sun stayed at the top of the apex of the sky all day long. Uh -huh. yeah. In other words, the sun didn't go down. Right. Right. And, and what did that do for them? That gave them more daylight yeah. in order to fight the battle. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, now the, the, the word daylight can be used as a metaphor. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because when uh, you lay laying there in the bed in the morning, and uh, you know it's time to get up, but it's, you know, that sleep is just yeah. so good. Yeah. And, and you roll over one more time. And, and, and you just drifting in that place. Y'all know how feel good that feels. Uh, when you know it's about time to get up. But you're still laying there and just caught up in the rapture of your slumber and your sleep. Yeah. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah. But then there's something that just kind of trickles through the side of your window pane. Uh, what is that? It's called daylight. Yes. And, and when daylight strikes your pupils, it's something that goes on on the inside of you. You get some energy uh, that says, it's time for me to get my day started. It's time for me to get up and get moving. And daylight will get you all out of the bed and into your day. And that's what we need in our lives today. We just need some daylight. Uh, uh, somebody, you looking at me and you say, Pastor, I've been uh, going through a lot of things. Child, all you need is some daylight. You just need a little daylight and things will turn around in your life. Just a little daylight will make a thing looks that look dark uh, to turn to something that looks bright. Just a little daylight. They looking at me, Lord, that they don't know about daylight. See, you don't come into a, 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 a lighted room and turn on the dark light. Oh, help me. Y'all will get that on the way home. Uh-huh, but 
but you come into the dark room and you turn on, the, you flip on the light. And, and, and that's what we need to ask God to just flip on the daylight in my situation. Flip on the daylight in my, uh, in my uh, dark days that I have. In the dark situations that I'm dealing with, Lord, just flip on the daylight. But in this story, here's the good news I want to tell y'all this morning. God decided he was going to show Joshua how that uh, about his great power. Yeah. So they were fighting the battle, mm -hmm. and they were not going to be able to prevail, uh -huh. but God stepped in. Yeah. Yeah. And when God stepped in, he made the sun stand still. Yes. And the, when they, the sun stood still, the daylight lasted a lot longer. Yes. And I'm going I'm to see if I can just put a little daylight in your life. Is that all right this morning? Yeah. And then we're going to be through this morning. See, if you want some daylight in your life, there's some things that you're going to have to do, you're going to have to work on. First, the thing you're going to have to work on is your assignment. Amen. If you want some daylight in your life, you got to find out what is your assignment. Amen. What did God assign for you to do? Because if you can find out what your purpose is in life, then daylight will flood your life. I, I, I see people all the time, they say, well, a preacher, I don't know what my purpose is. Uh, and, 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 and when they know, don't know what their purpose is, there's a whole lot of darkness in their yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. And when you got darkness in your life, young man, you know what you have to do? Uh, when you're going through life, you just, you like that person in a dark room, you just fumbling around. Yeah. Trying to, feel, there you go, trying to feel your way Amen. through life. Oh, y'all got quiet on me. Uh huh. Yeah, because y'all know when you fumbling around in the dark, and you're trying to feel your way, yeah. you easy stump yeah. on something. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and look, the quickest way for you to lose the little religion that you got <laughs> <laughs> is for you to bump up on something in the middle of the night. Yeah, uh, 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 yeah. you can hit your big toe and you might not scream. Uh, uh, glory to God. But if you hit that baby toe, you're going to squeal like a pig. Yeah. I, I, and that comes from, uh, the, 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 y'all see where I'm going here? That's the way some folk are in life. When you see them and they squealing and crying, that's because they've been fumbling through the night and they done stumped their baby toe. All right. And all they need to do is get some daylight in their life. They just need to let the sun shine in. Y'all will get that on the way home. See, you need you, and you're the one that need to turn the sun on. You, the Bible said, let your light so shine. You need to turn the sunlight on in their life so that they can have some daylight and they won't be fumbling through. Well, I, I, I can't got go, stay that long. Not only do you have to work on your assignment, but you got to work on your alignment. Yeah, because see, if you know what your assignment is. But if you're out of alignment, right. then you can't do what you need to do. Right. Oh, glory to God. I told you I was going to teach this morning, so y'all bear with me. Uh, 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 two week, three weeks ago, I uh, had a flat on my car. And uh, when I got to the repair shop for them to fix the flat, uh, Sister DeBurr, the tire had tread all the way around. But at one little spot, it had worn down. Tread all over here. One little old spot, a hole. All around the tire, $243 worth of tread. Y'all ain't helping me. $243 worth of tread. All around that tire. And one little spot where there's a hole. Yes. 
And I'm wondering, you know, y'all pastor, I, you know, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, I take your time back to the folk, and I'm dignified, and I ask them, uh, do you have any policy whereby I can get another tire? And they say, well, sir, let me look at the tire, and we, if we inspect it, and it shows that there's some wrong with the manufacturer, I'm going to come back to you. Uh-huh. Something wrong from the factory. Yeah. We will replace the tire. Uh huh. They got the tire out there, Deacon, and they looked at it, and the young man shook his head. He said, "No, your car is out of line." <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and you, I want y'all to get ready because this week you're gonna meet somebody who's out of line. Uh huh. Why? Cause they, you gonna see them down with, on the, with a flat on the side of the road. And they whining and complaining about how life ain't fair, about how they've been mistreated, about how they've been done wrong, and all of that. And that's all because they just out of line. Amen. Now, I know y'all saying, uh, no way, Don Jose, uh, you know, my life ain't out of alignment. Well, you don't, you don't, you don't go by what you think. See, uh, the manufacturer made a manual. And he said, you can't check it by what it looked like to you, because it looked like to you everything is all right. But now you got to look in the manual and see what the manufacturer is saying. And you got to line your car up by what the manufacturer is saying. Uh, how you line your car up, preacher? Well, see, uh, let me tell you something. This I wish I had time to preach last week when I was in that series about build your own fire, run your own race. Uh, 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 read your own Bible. Help me with that. Uh huh. Cause if you read your Bible, watch this. Your Bible will read you. See, some folks, they, they, I can tell they don't read their Bible because their Bible ain't reading them. See, when I read my Bible, my Bible reads me, and it tells me, "No, you out of line over here. You got to get back in line." I, I, and, and once I read over there in uh, John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I can get back in line. Uh, when I read the Bible that says, uh, in the word it says that uh, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, I can get back in line. Amen. So not only do we need to get in alignment uh huh. But we also need to know what is our assignment. And then finally, this is the one I waited all week to tell y'all about. You got to get in agreement. Amen. If I could turn back the hands of time, and I would do some things different. I would get in agreement. Who would I get in agreement That's with, preacher? That's the question. Yes. Question is, would you get in agreement with your mama and your daddy? All right. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Would you get in agreement with your husband or your wife? All right. Would you get in agreement with your boss on your job? All right. Would you get in agreement with the people uh, at the credit union yeah. or at the bank? Would you get in agreement? With uh, your, your kinfolk and your relatives, would you get in agreement with your friends? No, uh, I would get in agreement with my creator. Yes. I would get in agreement with God. Yes. And that's what we need to do this morning. We need to get in agreement with God. And that's, that's how I want you to understand that when you get in agreement yeah. with God. Yeah. God will make the sun stand still. Yes. And the daylight will go on and on and on in your life. God will shine a light down your pathway. When everybody else is in darkness, God will shine a light for you. When everybody else can't see their way, God will show you a way. And then when they say there ain't no way, God will make a way. And all you got to do is get in agreement with God. God said, the, 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 the word of the Lord said, trust in the Lord. With all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. That's getting in agreement with God. Uh, because we realize that uh, we don't know everything. But God is omniscient. He knows everything. And we uh, ought to get in agreement with God because God made us. We are his people. 
yes. and the sheep of his pasture. Yes. We ought to get in agreement with God. Uh, we ought to get in agreement because God says, if my people yes. who are called by my name yes. will humble themselves and pray, we ought to get in agreement. Yes. We ought to get in agreement with God because God says that uh, one of these days uh, I'm going to prepare you a place in heaven with me. You ought to get in agreement with God. And once we, get, once we get in agreement with God, God can do great things in our life. Uh, we say we are a great church and we do great things uh, because we get an agreement with a great God. Amen. We're in agreement with him that he is the God of the universe. Yes. We're in agreement with him that he is uh, our shepherd. Yeah. We're in agreement with him that he is our Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. We're in agreement with him that he is our Jehovah Shalom. Yeah. We're in agreement with God that he is our Jehovah Rapha. Yeah. You, got healing, you need healing in your body to tell him that? Get an agreement with him. He'll heal you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Uh, if you need something, get an agreement with God. He'll own the cattle of a thousand hills. Uh, he'll put some money in your pocket if you get an agreement with him this morning. Uh, uh, how do you know that uh, you can get an agreement with him? Because he sent his son so that we can get an agreement. He sent Jesus down through 40 to the generation so that we could get in agreement with him. And that's why I want to tell you as I go to my seat this morning, we are ready to go into this season of the year where we turn back the hands of time. And if we knew then what we know now, yeah. yeah, We do some things different. Yeah. But we know now that if we will get in alignment, yes. get in agreement, yes. and work on our assignment, yes. that God will make our life complete. Yes. Yes. And I just wanted to stop by this morning and tell you, God is speaking yes. into our lives. Yes. He said to us, All right. I can, you don't have to turn the hands back. I'll hold some things right where they are yes. until I can move in your life. I'll hold the sun right where it is in the sky yes. until you get the victory in your life. Yes. That's the one thing I want you to leave here with today. I know the enemy tells you that we're running out of time. Yes. But we serve the God who owns time. Yes. He got time in the palm of his hand. Yes. And all we have to do is get in agreement with God. Yes. And he'll hold some things in check until we get to victory. Yes. I'm on the battlefield yes. for my Lord. Yes. I'm on the battlefield yes. for my Lord. Yes. And I promised yes. him that I yes. would serve him yes. till I die. Yes. I'm on the battlefield yes. for my Lord. Yes. God bless you.